how we can take care of our patients in ear surgery. We all know that um, more than 50, 60% surgery is our uh, ear surgery. So today we have three points. I have just introducing three points that is just how we can improve the results and basic concepts of ear surgery. Second, how we can manage the revision cases or the cases being done by someone else and he has come for the revision surgery. And third point, which is very common, which is very difficult, is very frustrating is the ear discharge in our post-operative cavity, especially in the uh, mastoid cavity, mid mastoid cavity. So the topic is uh, the pulse of better ear surgery and uh, we will have almost an hour, we'll discuss it. And I think then after we'll share our views, you can have question answer session. So I will try to finish. We have almost 60, 70 slides. I will like try to finish as fast as possible, uh, covering all the aspects of your this thing. So what exactly the outcome of ear surgery? In fact, I would say for every surgery it depends on two factors like surgeon's skill. We all know that uh, the training of the surgeons, the Academic knowledge, theoretical knowledge, is leadership, is uh, awareness about the subject is the main factor which is responsible for the outcome. Patient selection and counseling, we all know that if we choose a better patient, we'll get a, we should, though we should not make any case. And as, uh, the, as for our seniors, the main, main dictum is that the difference between a best surgeon and the best, and good surgeon is that a best surgeon never take the cases who are, who are not going to give you better results. So, or uh, those who have big of complications. And your surgical instruments, your armamentarium in your better, your uh, technique which you have gained throughout your uh, experience during your MS, during your post operative period, post uh, practice period, in your present. Every day we learn from our mistakes and the technique which you have learned. Never think that you are the best, your technique is the best. Just try to find out every day new technique and uh, Enroll it in your day to day practice. Your post operative care, uh, because we should not leave the patient after surgery. We should take care of the patient for lifelong. No, don't leave that patient to your staff, to your assistant, or to your doctor. Try to keep in touch with the patient forever. And how we should manage the complication on table, <coughs> your, uh, on table and in post operative care. We should also manage these things. One dictum is there, one myth is there that ear surgery is the bread and butter of ENT. I would say it is not a true fact because we, uh, that is point that we do uh, over 60 to 70 percent surgeries are the ear surgery. But if we do not do the betterment in the surgery, that it cannot be a, a surgery for a bank balance. It is because ear surgery, it doesn't have a black tube. It is a never ending learning curve and you have to follow the learning curve. Otherwise, you will, your bread and butter will not come to you. Before starting <coughs> any surgery, especially ear, you should be well, well aware of the anatomy of the ear, starting from the student tube to the mastoid tip and our surrounding area, including the histopathology. You should know the physiology where the, uh, of the hearing. We should also know the gases exchange system, electrolytes, and biochemistry of the inner ear and middle ear. Also, these are the basic things we should know before starting practice. <clears throat> this picture I like the most. This is I know everybody knows this instrument. It is just like just like a stand which our holy we keep our holy books over there. Like and our holy book is this temporal bone, and we should do we should respect it and we should attain as much as temporal bone courses. Start with before starting practice, during practice, and whether you are in 10, 20 years of practice, you should go for these temporal bone courses forever and that gives you once you learn your knowledge is full you're fit uh, you are fit for the surgery once the patient comes to you never try to keep give the patient your staff or assistant to assessment do yourself do your, never do your uh, autoscopy see the see the things by yourself take a proper history and never be, never try to, again, I would say, never rely on your staff or assistant system. Take yourself because on table, sometimes you get different things on table. The history written on the file is different on your, you're talking to the patient, if they're doing in a local anesthesia or before surgery, you talk to them, you get a different thing. Because the main history of the patient is having discharge of this long time, how frequent is discharge, and that decides your surgical uh, plan on table also. Take history. 
investigation part, I will not go in detail. We all know that blood investigation, autological investigation, your radiology, whether we should go for uh, X-ray or CT scan, that is important. But one thing I would like to share in present scenario, that whether if you're doing uh, your ear surgery by normal, you should do a endoscopic examination of the patient before the surgery, in all the cases. If you're doing endoscopic ear surgery, that no issue. One investigation which I recommend in all the cases, especially where we are not getting good response to the antibiotic and the patient is not able to get a dry ear even after getting doing all the procedure. So in this case, I would recommend culture surgery as and accordingly we can manage these cases afterwards. In our practice, we are observing that in more than 50% cases, we are seeing our patient in OPD by endoscopes or by headlight and everything. And when we take the patient on table, at that time we find something wrong in the canal, um, canal widening or curvature of the canal. So I would recommend that microscope examination of the patient is must before taking the patient for the theater. Or if it is not possible, at least you inject the canal yourself, like you are doing a step is uh, permeatal or even mastodactyl. You should examine your canal while put the injection, at least you can assess how, how what is the curvature of the this uh, canal wall. So that will make uh, comfort as it is on and the, and before surgery. One thing I would like to again share that counsel the patient before all the surgery, whether you're doing grommet or you need plant, counseling is must because patient has, if you're getting patient with CSM or STPs, his company, he may be having complaint of discharge and hard of bearing, but maybe some associate problem could be there like headache, tinnitus, uh, some somatic, non-somatic problems. And you should know the thing in advance and you should explain the patient that I'm going to operate you for this thing and you are going to uh, benefit it by in those points. And so, so at least his realistic expectations should, expectations should be well explained in explain because they, I like this picture very much because uh, the realistic outcome you should explain because he's coming to you for CSOM and he has very high expectations that you should tell the patient in advance that, okay, I'm doing surgery. If you don't do these things, you just operate the case, whether you get a perfect drum, you get a perfect hearing, even and the patient may not be satisfied because he came to you and that will be your position because he had come to you for uh, other problems. And these, and these issues like perioral discomfort, oral discomfort, somatic, unexplained problem, these things will create problem. And keep in mind, Post-operative dissatisfaction in any form in symptom is considered as failure of the surgery. So you may be happy, but patient is not happy, then it is a failure of surgery. Take proper consent, especially in your cases, in uh, discharging cases, take the consent for the discharge, take the consent for the hearing that, okay, I would be able to give you this much, I never give, of course, you will never be never give 100% guarantee in any case, but at least you should have in writing or well explained to the patient. Always take a consent of face see in any sort of surgery, ear surgery, because you never know sometimes so many issues are there and many more consent depending upon the case which you are doing for the patient. I can plan to your One thing which I have observed in my practice, because I have been, I have been to many places for the surgery, I see esterilization is the biggest issue with our ENT surgeons. They think that because um, nasal surgery, throat surgery, and ear surgery are totally different and we should take proper isolation and we should keep in mind that we should prepare our autology theater, ear theater like a zero OT. It is very near to the brain, it is near to the middle structure. Yourself, your staff should scrub with all the due precautions with the proper, um, proper uh, washing materials and at least scrub for five to six months, that is basic principle. If, if you're doing, if you're single, you're doing single-handedly in a theater, and if there's so many people in surgery theater, if a microscope is uncovered, some doubt was then always cover your microscope with drip that you can make yourself uh, safe or the patient safe. Always train your staff, look at them, and just you can say you can do a surprise visit in your wash area, whether it's as that your staff is serving very well or not. They are following the principle. Sometimes you're out you know, in the chamber, the patient that is staff just to watch for two, three months and goes for the theater. So just keep watch on uh, your old staff as well as new staff. These things are very important. How much equipped you are, 
it is it has no definition but we recommend that your option filter should be well equipped depending upon your status of surgery what surgery you are doing but at least never compromise on your instrument never compromise on microscope never compromise on your pottery never drill all these things are very important you can compromise in your personal but you never compromise on these things because surgical outcome sir, sir, <laughs> sir sorry to interrupt can you be a little loud yeah okay okay now it's okay hello yes yes yeah, so for your outcome sorry. of the surgery depends now it's okay yeah go ahead sir hello <clears throat> So, your outcome your outcome of the surgery depends on your skill as well as the material or the instrument which you have in your operation theater in your setup and it is 10 plus 10 but i would say it is not 10 plus 10 it is 10 to 10 if your outcome improves by many fold if you have good equipments and of course good skill with you these things so one thing is there like uh, when the patient is on everything is ready and patient is on the table again i would say never compromise over here do proper painting dripping use all the necessary solutions and give at least 5 to 6 months let this betagen dry before dripping or before taking any incision in these cases because sometimes we see that we just uh, drip the case or paint the case and we put a drip over there but betagen is to well dried before of the dripping and again no shortcut here in dripping at least give three layer cover for all these cases so at least you are patient is safe from the outside inspection now patient is uh, ready and you are on table your instruments are ready this one confusion is there with all the new comers especially so which technique they should use whether you they should go for perinatal whether you should go post oral whether you should end oral again i would say it is your choice nothing like that your training your choice See the patient. What exactly surgery you are going to do? All the parameters, all the approaches have their advantages. All the approaches have their disadvantages. That's up to your training and your choice. But we should know all the techniques basically. And go ahead. This is one more concept is there. One confusion is there. One fight is there. Or since it's starting, and it, I think never line, never ending discussion on the mastoidectomy. Whether we should do mastoidectomy in our operation cases or not. Again, there are schools of two or three schools of thought. There are so many people doing under and mastectomy in all the cases. There are many people they are not doing mastectomy in any case. But I would recommend go for investigation, see the radiology, see the discharge, see the history. If you feel that, or on table, if you see that your elders part is blocked, just check it, and you can decide on the table. Keep the drill, everything ready on the table. So never be in any group. Just decide, and you, your main purpose is to give the patient a dry ear and a hearing ear. That you can do. No, no need to fight with what I am doing with the stacking. I am doing. I am opening the mastoidectomy. Regarding the graft, regarding the grafting, <clears throat> there are uh, there are so many issues are there. So many points are there. The which graft material should be used? Which placement technique should be used? Is it end oral, per oral? Uh, uh, you can say uh, uh, overlay, underlay, interlay technique. Or suppose we should you know, support the graft with helium or not, or <clears throat> we should prepare a bed for the thing. So all things, all the things are uh, objective. But I think there's a some consensus uh, consensus there that temporal asphyxia is, is still the most accepted and well um, the graft. Interlay nowadays in people are using most of the patients people are using interlay tucking with well tucking all around, keeping in view the basic principle of annulus and Uh, middle endothelial layer. <clears throat> it is recommended that if your middle layer because it's healthy, then no no need to put gel from in middle layer or any foreign material in middle layer. And uh, if you feel that you cannot see the annulus all around, go for the coronoplasty in your cases. That is again depending upon your case and new innovation as your choice. You want to modify your technique. That is. Whether you to use wet graft, whether you use a dry graft, again your training part is there. Wet graft have some other advantages, some limitations also. Dry graft has some advantages and some limitations also. But as for literature, there is nothing in major difference between using wet graft and dry graft. Regarding the osseoplasty, uh, once everything is done, you have the graft. 
uh, regarding also to see whether we should do in uh, what uh, same setting or in the second setting that depends upon again you know, manufacturers are there, the mid, their status of middle because uh, how effective is the case the patient is compliant whether he would be able to come in follow up or is affordability so many points are there the timing that you can decide material again is a um, so many options are there but i think best is uh, autologous graft in the form of cartilage or your uh, preserve your uh, ossicles again you can use so many materials are there you can use some of this cartilage and that materials are there so it depends on your choice but main point is that whatever material you using it should be well stabilized at the place you should know that you put in graft put in the process process is cartilage it should not dissolve it should not dissolve it should not dislocate afterwards that you have that part you have to take care during the surgery one basic point which we are i think most of us are missing is that mucosal preservation if you are doing a combined approach you are not taking out the canal wall then you have to follow principle of fast you have to preserve the mucosa from all around in the mastro cavity middle ear etc don't try to take it out otherwise in post operative period it will be problem if you are doing a combined i mean so radical mastoid or modified radical in this case you have to take out each and every bit of the mucosa and you have to follow the principle in com that uh, combined approach you can say where you are preserving the mucosa that it has ear should function like lungs ventilation is the main point and in the radical cavity or modified main thing is the uh, basic concept is same that in closed cavity the gas exchange and natural ventilation is the point in open cavity secondary epithelialization and proper ventilation of the cavity by itself to be outcome our main point is that we should keep uh, our self free in our opd at least to do something that you should, you should not you should not have any problem by seeing the patient no need to bend your head and don't give strain to your neck so you can see very clearly the canal wall that's why we recommend canaloplasty in all the cases and do a proper mutoplasty just to just you can clean the cavity later on so just you can uh, visualize your canal and you can clean your ca mastoid cavity formed mastoid cavity or uh, in the later stage so just to give a proper compliance and good good result now this is a cosmetic word we all know and we should take care of one thing which is very much is i have seen in many patient even i have done a mistake in my starting the practice we don't care about this part this is post auricular muscles and the repair of the post auricular incision and exposure and uh, that leads to the bad ear and this is one of the worst finding whatever surgery you do whatever results are there even patient is having this bad ear outgrowing of the canal uh, this uh, pinna then it is one of the worst thing and we should keep in mind and never try to give after doing two hours surgery keep 20 minutes extra for this part repair yourself in all the three layers don't give it to your staff or your assistant who is not trained in this thing because it is the cosmetic part and i think you don't want to get this problem should be there few tips i would like to share is that try to avoid give incision with your cautery because most of us don't do not have very good quality of cautery use a blade do not put some assist uh, this type of stitches and use a proper with good quality stitches otherwise you will have problem later on and post operative scarring post operative discharge or post operative later problem later and afterward we main up aim is just to have a well good looking post operative scar means you should not i would say uh, we should not the scar should not be visible in our post operative case. i think this point is there that we should whether we should do bilateral ear surgery or not we can do in proper indications certain indications are there no issue provided we cautious that this ear ear should not be infected at that time and how much is the necessity that you should keep in mind but you can do ear surgery not the strategy is one like uh, simple surgery so after finishing all these things uh, over when the patient is for discharge keep in mind that ear surgery patients have multi level expectation looking realistic and realistic as a caretaker because as a surgeon you are the in charge of the hospital you should try to clear the doubt before delivering him a bill before discharge and never try to give pseudo satisfaction to the patient check out everything because so now regarding the complication we should know how to manage it i will not go in detail which complication there but on table post operatively have patients on table call your colleague call your friend call your senior share the 
and on the meantime you should keep in mind never lose hope and just that i can manage every complication because you have to you are your surgeons we have to enjoy the life as a surgeon for long time do not give stress yourself and our patient is for discharge and that is the most important side i would say i would uh, say this is patient satisfaction is a must and we should know how we can satisfy our patient at the time of discharge how we can, there was a uh, we have other factors also that billing is the main issue that at least take care at that part during this charge and you should and one more thing that your employees uh, if your employers employees are satisfied then you can get a better result better caring for the patient and post operative 6 to 7 days are very fruitful for your practice provided you your patients and their family members are very much satisfied why am i am saying like this because you did you advise the patient to go for the rest 5 to 6 days 7 days and that mean time there's almost 3 to 400 500 visitors meet the patient and they and the patient is happy the relatives are happy and they would give you positive notes about you that will goes in your credit and that will improve your practice also so that was all about the basic how we can do some in nurse cell very straight forward on this person how we can keep these things in spite of doing all these things we get recurrences we get failures go depends on uh, 2% to 15 20 that how we can manage this complication or we get the cases being done by someone else and they have come to you for the surgery these are known as secondary cases how we how there are some basic principles about this case that i will share with you that secondary or revision cases how we should manage that these cases that is there the surgery which has been done by other surgeon and he is not known to you no previous records with or without complication is comes in the category of secondary surgery it is worth to know the identity of uh, it is worth to know the identity of the previous surgeon to get a better assessment and of the disease modulation something is coming in the way can i uh, this is screen can i just hello hello sir this is screen is coming that video views are coming in my side. okay it is worth to know the identity of the surgeon to get a better assessment and reduce modulation so that's why we recommend but keep in mind the legality and other issues before and doing the secondary cases or others revision cases Away yourself from these points. Never be the third party in these cases. And seeing the present situation, you should keep this picture in mind that always never say anything wrong about the previous surgeon. It is wise to take a or ask a patient to take one more opinion before taking the patient for surgery. And you can also you also can also have a best opinion from your seniors and those who can too. One slide I would like to share is that never compromise. These are revision cases done by you or by others. never compromise with the investigation and uh, uh, you, one investigation is radiology because it x ray just provide us some what the pneumatization etc but i think ct scan is must in revision cases because we could never know sometimes we see a small polyp in atic area or in atrial canal wall and we can we go for ct scan we can find major destruction in the cavity that's why uh, we can look for uh, the hidden part by ct scan and we recommend to go for ct scan in all the cases that we are doing in 100% cases second point is why this uh, patient is having so i had failure could be the second infection and if discharge is there we always recommend culture sensitivity in all the cases to get the sensitivity report and we know all this you get the this widow mass collapse e coli mrsa positive factor step or else etc are the causative agents which we should treat after the surgery according to the culture report we get sometimes some fungal infection which are not visible especially the ascosolosis etc that we can manage them accordingly and in this part of the country we get some tubercular infection also we get some tubercular infection also and that has to be what to the 3% cases we are seeing and even on table we can find out that something is wrong some bony and everything looking not and not and normal and these are the cases which we should uh, keep in mind now Uh, the revision cases or the secondary cases they have some so sometimes you see that something is wrong in the canal but uh, the, the patient's complaints is not matching with the 
clinical finding. So you would also assess psychological status of the patient, whether what is his attitude towards his illness and the concern. Sometimes you may get a depressive patient also. So just assess psychologically. If they, they are fit, then you should go ahead. Never allow your, your patient to speak anything wrong about the previous surgery, nor you should do this thing. And get full liberty. No, no compromise with your any investigation, etc. Get full liberty before to do free hand in this case. Do as per your consent. And and if you feel something is wrong, if something is busy, it is not patient is not very cooperative, he has some doubt, then I think better to cancel this case than to them. Never say never and you, you can say directly if I can do this case. Never play anything with this. So finally extract out the parent diagnosis by any way and make make a road map for the surgery. Regarding the incision, if the surgeon, better to give a incision on the previous site, and since by the previous surgery some uh, fibrosis, lots of fibrosis, lots of destruction do happen, so avoid cautery incision in this place because already breast uh, is compromised. We should avoid unnecessary use of cautery. Use and start using microscope while elevating the flap because then, uh, there's the flaps are already in different different form. So use microscope to make flap, pseudo flap, keep the neurovascular bundle intact. That should be the basic thing. Never try to dig out. Because we see sometimes in master cavity, old, previously operated master cavity or middle ear, some granules and tissue, some tissue may be there. So don't try to pull it out blindly because they may attach to the some structure. And we don't know the uh, bony uh, nature. Try to start drilling with diamond work. Never try to pull use the um, cutting bar in a starting because it may create problem. So just start with diamond bar. If you look, you feel that bone is okay, then you can start dealing with the diamond bar. Again, this slide I like in most uh, in these cases, don't be lazy here. Do long, more and more drilling because uh, drilling the one more one of the causes of failure this failure or recurrent discharge is the concealed osteitis in these cases. And I think we should drill out as much as possible, remove more of, more of the more of the bone, whether it's a looking a normal looking bone, because first chat is to take out all the infective bone and all around. The second point, you can with the drilling, you can remove the biofilm from the mucosal port, hidden mucosal port. That is the main point. And you can, as for the cultural port, as for the, you can treat the biofilm bacteria and uh, and regular cleaning postoperatively. A lot of macrolides, clorothromycin has already been proven and we are using in our cases since long time. We are getting good, good results in this biofilm cases. So treat the primary cause, if any, is there you can see any cause. Like in, uh, we have seen many cases been come to us with uh, such picture where the, he was operated for medical, uh, modified radical with very high rate of sputum was very bad. So just treat the uh, canal, go on, lower down the uh, canal, is, uh, Ridge below the canal wall itself. If you get a stepes case, never try to remove the stern uh, first instance. Just help where exactly the problem was. Find out where it is foot plate or if fibrosis dislocation it occurs. Just see the piston where exactly it is. If everything's fine, then take out the piston uh, later on in the same sitting. And uh, one thing which is, I think, one more most common post operative uh, detraction is that we take out the incurs for the reconstruction. We make a osteoblast to put a good uh, processes over there, but we forget about the attic part, which was being made vacant by taking out the incurs, and that could be the cause of postoperative retraction and second infection. Always after doing osteoblast, you try to fill that area partially to make it like a natural editors for the. Okay. We get residual perforation in uh, after doing very good surgery, but and why why it happens because we are we just to big work, two hour works for the, uh, remove the disease, but in the last, for the grafting, we do the compromise. And water matter use the extra time for the bed placement and then operate. Okay, and it, suppose it is a person, we are doing what we are doing in the technique and we are making a small uh, nick in the uh, graft to make it, uh, make a sleeve around the handle of malleus. So you can get a 100%, almost 100% security for the graft and uh, put the graft in a proper shape. If you're making, I mean, if you made a big cavity, then you should cover that cavity with a well vascularized uh, graft, put over there and put a vascular flap and make it more secure.
ventilation we all are already discussed with you that ventilation is the key of any medical surgery you should respect it you should know where exactly whether there is any any uh, mechanical or physiological block is there or not take it and you should also assess the institutive functions and its morphology need obstruction is there or not uh, check out the nasopharynx adenoids etc before doing all these things and uh, exposure of your surgery should be very good if you are doing a post trabecular approach drill out the bone to get a better exposure if you are doing a transcranial approach you should find that uh, and if you find that you are not able to take out the disease uh, while preserving the bridge or ridge take out never hesitate to never uh, you can say struggle over there take out the bridge when to convert it into canal wall down i have seen many cases where everything is fine but patient is having recurrent collection of discharge it could be because of the improper uh, uh, you can say extra canal wall and that we call it just uh, and you can do mini metroplasty to get a better exposure better cleaning better maintenance of the uh, canal wall and cavity itself so regarding the osteoplasty reconstruction uh, we should know the i think we could do any uh, reconstruction the basic concept is biophysics of your of, of the middle ear ventilation middle ear reconstruction which material you using and how uh, you are keeping over there that is a very important thing because in revision cases tissue morphology is altered in these cases that's why we should be there always uh, and we have seen many cases that the, the reconstruction part has been shaped in cuss or whatever metal we used been drilled by the previous surgeon and while drilling they never i think the cause could be that they never put the uh, uh, irrigation over there and that caused the thermal injury of the reshaped in cuss or in shaped cartilage and that get necrosed within few, few few weeks of the time and that caused the you know, the loss of hearing in these cases so uh, always put a, a properly sized processes and uh, cavity obliteration cavity ventilation is the main issue if possible try to reconstruct the posterior canal wall and we call it the canal wall reconstruction in these cases if possible and in revision cases since you know that middle ear mucosa may not be healthy tissue may not be healthy then you can put a spacer uh, in the form by the by cartilage autologous cartilage or the synthetic spacer you can use it over there to get a proper covering and uh, that i discussed already discussed in this cases covering should be proper remove the mucosa that is one thing line i want to say one of the common cause for revision surgery is disrespect which we give to the middle ear mucosa mesoderm mucosa so we should respect it like we are doing as try to cover each and every aspect of the mid cavity mid this thing cover uh, uh, it should be covered well or nothing should be left bare because this could be the cause for the re recurrent granulations and recurrent discharge from the area never try to play with the middle ear mucosa that is a victim and uh, do not play with the middle ear mucosa because that can cause that will problem finishing again before in these cases always try to put recommend to try never try to put dry gel form uh, it should be well mixed with the steroid and antibiotic and uh, respect and use the vascular strip for the covering of final covering of course that will give you beautiful outcome and beautiful results while uh, you can get a healthy covering all around and the last finally our main aim is to give a patient a dry ear and if possible a um, hearing ear so that was about uh, the things now we are seeing in many cases our practice uh, we do lots of good surgery and after doing 3 4 hours work a uh, patient comes to you after 2 months seeing and that again he is having discharge from the ear so these are discharging cavities how we can uh, these are again one more frustrating thing i would like to share and i think you should all follow the basic principle sometimes the cis compellers to turn is this beautiful structure we have to take it out in medical or modified medical cases so we should always follow the basic principle about it and basic physiology should be followed in those cases like this is the we are taking out the bridge and bridge we are making a bit cavity this bit cavity are not formed in a proper way can lead to a recurrent discharge recurrent problem for you for the family for the patient and the reason and it one of the commonest cause of dissatisfaction in this case so so uh, shovel and pushing should not be the principle of this surgery don't try to put everything in the bed cavity 
it should be in a proper way. Basic is that we all know I discussed with the middle ear gas exchange, the tube function and the middle ear ventilation. These things, if you keep in mind, your tube function, your middle ear, because everything should be, then these are the deciding factors to, to go for the construction. Uh, myth about this uh, MRM medical radical is that uh, it is okay. we say that those who cannot do combine this canal wall up to approach they go for the this canal MRM but I think this is not actually true if it is true then it is the only indication otherwise however uh, the two function post-operative compliance job profile of the patient a few more deciding factors to go for modified radical this is and now we all know that radical mastoidectomy and bondage modification have very few indications nowadays. The point is that the surgery, this surgery, modern, this uh, cavity of written uh, modified radical has some basic principles and we should follow all these principles. Otherwise, if not, we don't, do not just see this cavity, it's a clumsy looking cavity, patient is having recurrent discharge and having discomfort all around uh, uh, the head and uh, not the proper neuroblast. These are the complications which are not acceptable. So I think you should follow a few points I'm just sharing over here so you can get a proper cavity. If you're not confident, confident enough to do canal wall up, then better to choose canal wall down to avoid such unfruitful recurrence because in this case, this patient was operated for t somewhere and he came to us uh, only after one and a half year, six, uh, 12 months, uh, 13 months after the surgery. Reason was because uh, the, uh, the CT scan was not done for primary radiological investment not and he was having a small cholesterol and he, he uh, had a recurrence. These are the cases which we should uh, keep in mind. Why, uh, and, uh, when we take this patient for motor radical, we should mentally prepare ourselves. And plan accordingly because you are going to implement a, you are going to make a big cavity, and you have to plan accordingly, and you as you have to reconstruct. So take a big step, either the interface step, this occipital myocardial step, or posterior based or anterior based. Keep it ready before the surgery, and if it, if it is needed in your reconstruction, well and good. Otherwise, if it's not needed, you can uh, stitch it back. So uh, that before surgery should be given. This photograph, uh, I'm very much, I would say, uh, I would say sorry for this thing because the surgeon said this is a wonderful cavity I made, but I think this is not wonderful. This, this, this beautiful looking cavity is going to trouble everyone in future, including patients, your, yourself, and society. Why, what are the problems? The disease is not lower down, the canal wall is low, the inferior part is not uh, drilled out, the scrotum is well is still there and this overhang is there that is not a proper cavity and this cavity is going to trouble you forever in life how to overcome these things and you should have a very the basic keep one basic dictum that more you remove the bone for radical lesser would be the cavity size just keep in mind pick out saucerize the margin of the saucerize the margin of the uh, bed cavity and uh, so, and try to remove up to the tip of the mesoderm entrum, so you can that will help in uh, reconstruction and cavity cavity operation. And lower the ridge and floor to the lowest as possible, as safe you feel, and that will give a better result. And one more thing I would like to share: sometimes we see lots of lots of granulation tissue in uh, in around after removing the carcinoma or uh, tissue from the tissue. And these granulosal tissues are very uh, risky for the future. They get degraded and discharge. Best way, safest way is just use a good quality bipolar. Do a uh, irrigation over there and do the bipolar portrait of this uh, uh, this uh, granulosal tissues that you can take out the unhealthy tissue. And this uh, video I would like to share means uh, at least I will give one or two minutes because this is the cavity operation. After making a big cavity, well socialized cavity, how we can reconstruct it, preserve. Of little bit reconstruction, I think the best point thing is cartilage. Use a cartilage, harvested cartilage, keeping pericontrum at least on one side, and use these uh, cartilages in a very proper way. Don't try to throw it inside, and use it in the palisading way, and in the, you can say in a framed way, and uh, you can obliterate the uh, cavity in this way, and uh, use bone dust 
and never try to use the bone dust which you have taken out from the menstrual margins. I would imagine. Take a separate site from there, like in the temporal area, take a bone dust from that area. You can mix it with a fresh blood or uh, ERP solution also. And uh, the, just keep in mind the posterior canal wall, left posterior canal wall flap skin is the diamond layer of the healing. If you keep it intact and you cover it on that uh, fascia which you're using for the reconstruction, and this fascia is very good. And uh, if you put over there, well surrounded, well supported by the post oracle skin, I'm sure, I'm 100% sure that it will get a vascularity and it will help in the healing. Finally, after doing all these things, you can. If you feel that your uh, middle ear is healthy, you can do the reconstruction like in this case we have done over there and do the reconstruction. And you do that uh, preserve, uh, you're starting to cap the uh, muscle flap, you can occipital myocardial flap, flap, to flap for the reconstruction for the obliteration. And that you have made a big cavity, you have the reconstruction, and now you have obliterated the cavity in a proper way. That cavity is going to be a perfect cavity, and 99% chances you will not have any problem in this cavity. One more thing is that what this uh, this uh, video I have taken from Dr. Satish Jain is wonderful video. This is about this is about uh, obliteration because sometimes we get a small cavity, or sometimes we everything revision multiple revision cases. We don't have uh, any uh, graft over there. Then you can use this. Temporalis periosteal flap. It is a middle, middle temporal artery based flap. Very good flap. It gives a wonderful result because the chances of necrosis are very less. And you can use this flap to obliterate the cavity, to cover the cavity. You can use this flap as a temporalis muscle, as a temporalis uh, temporal fascia, or you can recurse it as a, as a you, know, you can say, middle uh, impairing membrane graft. And uh, in these cases, try to put, uh, avoid putting thick muscle flap to prevent canal stenosis. That is the main point. So there are many options. And uh, uh, metoplast, this is, I think, one more important thing that metoplast, we all know everybody has its own technique, everybody has its own uh, results. And I will not go that which is taken. This is your choice, which technique you want to have. But keep in mind that size depends on obliteration. It, the size of the middle class, it depends on the obliteration, how much you have done the obliteration and how much reconstruction you have done. That's the one. Never cut through the middle flap. That is again a point that never try to take an incision in the middle flap and dissect the golden cartilage possibly. These are the cartilages which are the, we are seeing on this section. These are the golden cartilages that we have to keep in mind. Never try to leave it inside or never try to cut in a wrong way. And uh, Never forget to remove and the canal wall for flap. The canal wall is cartilage. We have to remove in all the cases to get a proper flow of uh, discharge for the secretions from liberty. So you should make a very flowing cavity, uh, sloping cavity, sloping canal. We can and uh, use metal flap as good vascular particle in all the cases. Do not forget to stitch the skin flap to cover the beard cartilage. If you leave the cartilage over there, chances of uh, second infection to be there and maybe like in perigondritis uh, there. So just keep it over there, uh, fill the cavity, uh, fill the cavity with gel from whatever material you want to use and uh, put a dressing over there. So the few first I would like to share here that what are the good points that a draining cavity in the post-operative is not the fault of surgery, that is the fault of the surgeon, keep in mind. And inappropriate neuroplasty is one of the commonest morbid reason for or frequent follow up or frequent poor compliance. And we have seen many cases in post operative cases. We, can, we see a large cavity with a small conical uh, uh, depression over there. These are the inverted uh, trunked cone appearance should be applied to both the main cavity as well as, and we should try to cover all these cones or uh, you can say, or in the, with, the, with the material, either bone dust or cartilage or graft hatches. Never leave this. Uh, uh, cavity open like this. The space that cannot be adequately extruded should be well obliterated. Never leave a you can see dimple around. And uh, final size of keep in mind that you, after making a big cavity, you feel that I have made this cavity. This is a big cavity, and 
the final size of the cavity which we are making determined by the natural granulations which are going to form in later part of the recovering phase and presence of good meiotoplasty in conjunction with the obliteration made by you as a vascular cavity. So today we are after the surgery we are making a cavity well obliterated, but the final size will come after two or three months after such of the physiological changes. Few one or two few points I would like to share again here is that uh, after doing everything, we take out we take out the bone, and uh, we should take out the osteotic bone as I told you. But uh, once everything is out, try to keep the one thing that there's no sharp margin over there. You can use whatever the sensitive area like uh, dura, pigment sinus, little sinus. It should be well covered with the vascular prep. So there should be no second infection. So there should be no complication afterwards. And that flaps uh, should be covered by the myocutaneous flap and then close the cavity. So uh, don't let that happen. Because uh, if you are taking enough time on the table, then you can prevent the complications. Just see this case being operated uh, and just see there's not a proper cavity and the surgeon has to do this suction every time, has to do the cleaning every time, every two months, every three months the patient is coming to. You can avoid it, give extra time on the table, all these things and you can avoid this post-operative discomfort, uh, irritation by the surgeon, by the staff, by the yourself, so by the patient also. So just give extra time and don't make a clumsy cavity. Otherwise, what happens? This, uh, just see the louse is moving in your menstrual cavity, made menstrual cavity, and this is not a good sign. So keep in mind that you can give extra time on table, do as much as best on the table because in medic and this my ear surgery, division surgery, uh, menstrual surgery, we are making big cavity, modified data surgery. We have only one chance, that is the chances on the table. You cannot do anything outside and the recovery. Uh, so I think we have some videos, but I think we have uh, our time is over now. So videos are there, very good video. So I think we keep in mind in the ear surgery that you should you should stick to basics. Never try to do innovation without uh, without uh, any uh, your basic thing. Thanks for your precious attention and giving time for this. Uh, the questions uh, more. The questions are there. So I have, we have 10, 12 minutes left. How to see the question? Okay. Uh, now, Dr. Firoz Khan. Uh, thank you, Dr. Firoz from Pakistan. And uh, so, Dr. Sanjay Bhattak has raised his hand. I'll unmute him if he would like to speak to you. Yes, Dr. Sanjay Bhattak, can you uh, hear us? I have put you on unmute. You can talk to Dr. Rajiv Kajori. Dr. Sanjay Patel. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Dr. Sanjay, yeah. Sir, hello, sir. Hello, hello. Very, very, very informative lecture, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, please go for some quality with us, some issue with the uh, uh, voice quality, a little problem was there. And. Uh, Actually, sir, I am in PPE. That's why voice is not clear. Oh, you you are wearing PPE, sir. All right, fine. Right, right. Where are the questions actually? Sir, we have Dr. Abdul Salam. I'll unmute him. Hello. Jabole, ha? Hello. Okay. Yeah, I have unmuted Dr. Abdul Salam. Yeah, yeah. Hello, sir. You can ask your question. Uh, 
I don't have any question. Dr. Abdul Salam, please uh, ask your question, sir. No. Uh, Dr. Abdul Salam, please ask your question. We have unmuted you, sir. Yeah, Dr. Abdul. Yes, please go ahead. Hello. Dr. P. B. Raghu has commented, we expected to get pearls, but got diamonds. Excellent, sir. Dr. P. P. Proud Raghu. Thank you. Yes, I look yes, sir. This is very good player of the cricket. He's an all-rounder. He's an all-rounder. Dr. is there? Charlie, read the question out. Dr. Minish Juvekar from Bombay has posted some question. What advantage of Jan Fox? Question from Dr. Manish Juvekar. What advantage of gel form with steroids to UC post operative in ear cavity? We are using gel form in of course dry gel form. Sometimes it will have time to take it out. So we use a steroid mixed with the antibiotic in all the cases. Nowadays we are starting BIP also. In these cases we get a proper healing and early recovery in these cases. Wrote, uh, for Dr. Venus, uh, what is your post operative protocol of injectable? I think uh, in normal temporal plastic cases, we give uh, only one sort of IDV antibiotic in post op case, then followed by the oral antibiotic. In the infective cases or as per the culture sensitivity, we give anti IV antibiotic, otherwise, we give oral antibiotic in our post op case. And uh, Dr. Venus, you. Any question from issue with the, I think time is over. Sir, apart from that, one more request has come from Dr. Prakash Munka. He has asked to yeah. unmute himself. So I'm unmuting him. So over to Dr. Dr. Prakash Dr. Munka. Please ask your question. Uh, hi, Rajiv. Yes, yeah, sir. Yes, sir. How are you, sir? Uh, fine. Thank you. It was an excellent presentation. I just sent a small message in between. Like many yes. people asked, they joined late. Uh, though you have yes. covered almost all things very nicely, uh, your presentation yes. was going little fast and the voice little slow. Rather, you can say the other way around. So many yes, people yes. could not gather. So in a couple of minutes, if you can say a few of the very, very important precautions or the tips, though you have explained all, out of all those, say pre starting from the preoperative assessment, uh, during surgery, post-op. Just two two points each. If you say that will benefit most of the people. Okay, last, Otherwise, last it was an excellent presentation, and we'll like to see right. your presentation again. If you can uh, uh, post it on the YouTube or give a link, that will be a great service. Uh, Dr. Munka, the entire program is being recorded. We will take yeah. uh, we will take Dr. Rajiv Bachori sir's you know consent. Once he gives consent, uh -huh. we will share. The